The Property Pod. 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 Welcome to The Property Pod with MoneyWeb. The property sector is an ever-changing sector. And in this podcast series, your host, Suren Naidu, chats to movers and shakers in the property industry. With August being Women's Month, The Property Pod is profiling leading women in South Africa's commercial property industry. In this episode, I have the pleasure of speaking to Ipaleng Mkari, founder and CEO of Motseng Investment Holdings. Ipaleng is a mover and shaker in the industry and has made a mark both through her own company as well as leadership positions in the sector. Motseng's history goes back almost 20 years when Mkari secured an empowerment deal with Marriott Corporate Property Services in a 50-50 joint venture on a property management company. Mkari thus played a pioneering role in the early transformation of the property sector and is also former president of the SA Property Owners Association. Welcome to the Property Party, Peleng. Thank you, Suren. It's a pleasure being here. Ipaleng, you've been in the property industry or property arena for 20 years, but have also expanded into other sectors with Motseng Holdings. Tell us more about the scale, services and investments that Motseng Investment Holdings encompasses today, other than property. Thank you, Suren. Um, Motseng has really vertically integrated into three key verticals. Um, Outside of property, we have an infrastructure business that is called Mutzing Concessions, very much allied to property because when you think of the infrastructure space that we've been in, it's really public-private partnerships developing these um, large assets that government requires and looking at long-term project finance projects. So that is the one space we've gone into. The second, which is also quite linked to property, is the acquisition of a company called Selmec in 2012, um, around about the same time that we listed our property fund. We acquired a business called Selmec. We converted the name to become Mutsing Selmec. And that's a business in the telecommunications space, which really um, looks at managed services uh, for the mobile network operators not just in South Africa, but also outside of the country, in Mozambique and in Lesotho. So that is interesting in the sense that we do a lot of um, the management of their entire, uh, what they would call their their, um, uh, static or or, or portfolios, essentially their tower assets. Um, And and those are quite interesting um, ancillary products or services to property. And more recently, Suren, we have been very excited by our entrance into what we call smart building solutions. So I suppose it's still property related, but it moves into the space of energy. And and really, that is an all-encompassing area. And you may know that last year we acquired a business called um, Mott McDonald Africa, which really was the most recent acquisition in our business, which we've renamed MPA Mott which is also a services business, but mostly in the engineering and infrastructure space, also touching on on property. Going back to how it all began, uh, around 20 years ago or 2002, your deal with Marriott, Marriott is not involved directly in the property space anymore, but at the time it was one of the biggest empowerment deals. Maybe you want to talk about how you secured that deal because it was one of the biggest deals at the time and maybe then go into where the company is today, because uh, obviously you've expanded, but how big is property within your uh, company? So we started in 1998, Suren, and our first transaction just before Marriott was the Enforce transaction. We acquired equity into the Enforce security business. And I think that catapulted us to the KZN investor base. Um, because I think very soon after that, in 2000, um, we, in fact, in 2002, we then concluded the Marriott transaction um, with, uh, you know, the, the gentleman there. And, and I think what was quite exciting at the time was, you know, David Green and Craig Ewan were looking for a BE partnership where they could essentially start a new company from scratch 
called Mutzing Marriott Property Services. So it was a 50-50 joint venture, focusing on their asset base that clients or where clients were really pushing transformation as a requirement. So Marriott continued with their own core business, being Marriott Property Services, as you may recall. And it was one of the largest BE transactions, as you, as you say, Suren, because at that time, there were very few other Black-owned property management outfits in the country. Um, in fact, if I recall, I think there was one other established pl- a party, and that was Dijalo Property Services. And, you know, if I think of our journey in the last 23 years, we have shifted the business fundamentally from purely property management uh, focus to, you know, we very quickly after getting into property management, diversified into facilities management, that was a natural uh, organic kind of move. And then we got into this concessions infrastructure management space um, where we developed probably the largest uh, accommodation triple P in this country, some hundred thousand square meters of building under roof that we still today are owners in and still manage in terms of our facilities management business. Property management or property per se has grown within Mutsing. We continue to be a very strong and leading facilities management provider, but property management as a discipline, we have almost very, almost next, maybe less than 10% of our work is pure property management, even maybe even less than that statistic. And I think it's really just a function of where we believe the quality of earnings lie. Um, I think that property management is a very consolidated, concentrated space in South Africa. And what you've seen is a number of players morph into integrated facilities management players, which is where we felt in the early 2000s, we felt that that was really where the quality of earnings and growth potential lay for for Mutsing. Um, so today we own properties, so we've become a landlord of our own. Um, we obviously listed a portfolio called Delta, but the company was not invested in Delta. Delta really became an arm that was listed outside of Mutsing. And, and post the Delta listing, we focused on corporate-backed uh, leases uh, with, say, lease-backed transactions, um, you know, with OEMs um, and the like. And really that's where our focus is today from a property Standpoint. You'd say that uh, property is uh, property management is relatively small. I know the business uh, you have expanded into Africa, and I know at a conference you mentioned some work in Mauritius as well. But um, at the time um, when I was at the Mercury, in fact, I interviewed Lynette and Tuli, who used to work at Mutseng, and she was one of the youngest center managers. Um, at the time, you managed, uh, for example, the Pavilion Shopping Center and um, Westgate Shopping Center. Maybe uh, because it's a property pod, yes, you've expanded to probably the high level of property. Um, are, are you still involved in, on managing uh, flagship uh, centers and, and that's recognizable to the South African public? Not in terms of property management. As I said, we, we've shifted purely to, you know, the more focus on facilities management. So we manage some very large recognizable assets nationally on the facility side. But I think what is interesting, Suren, is that if you look at where property management is today and where it was then, at the time, there was a proliferation of a number of businesses that were privately owned that really got into the space And because of the transformation agenda, we, I suppose, got a space at the table, a seat at the table. But what we found were that there were already two or three giants, a JHI and a Brawl, really, who had secured largely the listed funds assets and the unlisted fund, you know, the landlords uh, who were sitting there. And it, it was quite challenging, I think, at the time, and I think would still be challenging for a new entrant to come into that space if you didn't do it creatively and differently. And this is part of the reason why Delta was born, because the the realization that we had quite quickly was that we could either agree or acknowledge that we will forever be a small to medium-sized services provider to the industry, 
um, without really moving the needle significantly. Or if we wanted to move the needle, we would need to be an owner. And we chose the latter to create and develop or to acquire our own assets, which we would then manage. And I think what you've seen in the main following uh, probably a period between 2005 to now is many of the large listeds doing that themselves, really consolidating these property management requirements, taking the externalized uh, managing uh, management entities and internalizing them, particularly with the REITs. Um, and, and even the likes of Delta did the same. So, so you know, it, it has shifted the market for your independent operators uh, who are still the large operators, but it obviously forced them to say, well, we can't focus only on property management. What else exists in this value chain? And, and I think, you know, second to that is the fact that the, mar the, the quality of earnings within property management you know, in my mind, from what our experience, you know, as, as recently as 2019, I think when we did our probably our last property management contract, they are far surpassed by the facilities management operation. And, and I think that the facilities management operation offers in itself quite a lot of creativity um, in the sense that it is really, as I say, just, you know, expense management, OPEX management, CAPEX management, and has allowed us to start saying, well, what else can we do that is allied to this? So we, we, we have been, um, I suppose, the market dictates where you go in many respects. And, and we have also had the benefit of creating our own opportunities. And we will continue to do that. Um, I think it's very important, Suren, as an independent operator, to be able to create your own, um, your own funnel of work, so to speak. With regards to the overall company, how, how big is, is Motseng Investment Holdings considering all the different units and how many people do you employ? Because I also know that you've made quite a lot of investments into training and uh, investing back into the community as well. Suren, so today the number has vacillated between probably the largest we were ever in terms of employment numbers was 600. And today, I would say, as a business uh, on its own, as MIH, without our other associate businesses, we probably sit at about 300 numbers. Um, and if we consolidate the numbers between our recent acquisition of MPA March, we certainly over 400. So you, we, we are not a big business. We are a boutique, almost property um, and investment business. We don't invest in anything that is really outside of the value chain of property. We, we love the fact that, you know, telecoms and, and energy assets are still in our mind, have a very strong property portfolio or property profile. Let me say, put it that way. Um, there's still a strong revenue stream uh, in a telco asset. There's still a strong revenue stream in, in a project finance asset. And so for us, the ribbon which we, with which we wrap around the asset um, doesn't really bother us as long as there is an asset and a long-term structure, some kind of structure, lease, project finance to it. Um, and that excites us a lot. I think the, the other element uh, when you talk of size within Mutsing is that our asset base at the last count in terms of assets under management is probably just under 20 billion. So it has also come down with um, some of our projects where we've possibly you know, handed back over to clients, the contracts have ended. But when you look at our total asset base, um, when you consider what we manage in terms of the m assets, what we manage in terms of the PPP assets, what we manage in terms of the typical traditional facilities, it's just under 20 billion. So it's not a number that has moved very much from where it was maybe a decade ago, Suren, which also tells you how competitive this market is. Um, you know, quite hard to, 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 to push out some of the big, the larger entities but um, also quite nimble and, so, and, and quick for us to, to create opportunities far quicker than they can. Ipaleng, I think you being a bit modest, 400 people is 400 people. Um, many, many of the listed funds, um, you know, employ a, a, a lot less than that. Obviously, a lot of it is outsourced with property management and that sort of thing. But uh, 400 people, uh, that, that's 400 jobs that you, you've created effectively. Um, just getting a little bit... Um, 
um, softer. Uh, the next question I, I thought I'd ask you anyway, because you have a famous uh, surname. I'm sure you had a famous surname before that, but your name is, uh, your, your surname, it's Ipaleng Mkari, uh, being married to Given Mkari. But you are a self-made businesswoman. How was it in the beginning being a, a, a woman coming into the industry, not just a woman, but a black woman making some really big moves, especially from a transformation side? Yeah, thank you, Suren. I think that's an important question, especially now in Women's Month. You know, it was tough. It wasn't easy. And, um, you know, in the early days, Suren, one was Ipileng Muloto, very, very unknown individual. Um, and, and I found it tough, but at the same time, because I suppose there was a lot of policy support um, and I think in those days, you know, between anything between the late 90s and, and mid 2000s, um, the economy and policy convergence and the support was really strong. Um, and I think that that combination allowed for entrepreneurs like myself to thrive, to be creative, to build businesses, to, to dream a bit bigger, particularly even as a black woman. I think that whilst there were many spaces where I found myself to be maybe one of the only or the few, um, I was, and I still regard myself as a very confident person. I knew my capabilities and I understood that it really was about relationship building in those spaces, finding the right partnerships. Um, and, and that really propelled not just me as an individual, but our business propelled our teams to, to feel um, capable and, and able to, to do what they needed to do. Just as a parting shot, uh, Ipaleng, um, you have had a number of leadership roles in addition to establishing Motseng. You are the former president of the South African Property Owners Association. Um, what would you say has been your highlights in your career? And maybe as a parting shot, what can we expect from you and Motseng in the future. Thank you, Suren. Um, you know, two very key roles have been very important to me in my career. And I think there've been many, many stellar moments, but I have had the benefit and have worked very hard in, in two specific organizations, that's Women's Property Network, as well as SAPOA. And if I look at the journey of this 23 year through journey, uh, at a personal level and at a career level in terms of their whole business, those have been phenomenal highlights for me personally, um, leading you know, WPN in 2007 and then SAPOA in 2018-19. Really, Suren, it has been about being able to establish oneself as a business leader in an industry that's quite clicky, quite small, but very impactful and very a massive contributor to the GDP of our country. Um, and that takes a lot of grit, a lot of hard work, a lot of relationship building, a lot of delivery, a lot of mistakes as well. Um, but I've, I've, I've loved those moments in my career because they haven't been about, you know, how much more we can get in terms of a business or what opportunities and contracts or properties we can buy. But it's been about shifting the narrative in the industry. When I started, there were very few black women, as you say. 1998, you know, you would walk into meetings and there were practically nobody. Um, today, I'm very proud of the fact that I think together with many other women, we have demonstrated and allowed many other women to enter the industry and not to feel afraid because they see other women getting into the senior ranks. Um, and, and they see all women, by the way, moving up. And, and, and that has been my, my career journey. It's making sure that we really, really begin to transform um, just the, the, the representation within our industry, particularly the gender representative, representativity, Suren. Um, and you would know recently that, um, you know, WPN recently together with Anchor Capital, I think it was, and Growth Point, uh, we just did a nice research report on uh, the state of the gender, uh, of gender equality in our industry. The second moment, obviously, I think highlight for me was Sapoa, because at a national level, that 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 was quite a um, an opportunity um, and an honor to serve um, our industry at a difficult time. 
you know, there were many different policies that were taking place. I think, uh, you know, land policies and, and, and beginning to make sure that we needed to understand how to deal with those. So, so personally, I, I feel that those are standout moments for me. Um, and, and I hope that in that journey, it has allowed another black woman or another woman to recognize just how possible it is. We, any, any one of them can achieve that. And just as a parting shot, um, your, your, your plans, is it uh, taking it as it comes or any big plans? We're enjoying a number of things. I mean, we took, you know, we acquired the business MPA mod last year. It's been a year of settling the business, making sure that the integration happens really well. My partner and CEO of the company, Malani Padayachi Saman, is, is, a, is an astute business leader. Uh, but, you know, moving from a business where you're running 30, managing 35 people to managing 200 is a major shift. So the focus has been on just making sure that we don't lose clients, which we haven't. Um, and I must say that we have been able to steady that ship really well. Um, looking to the future for Mutsing, there are a couple of interesting places and things that we want or transactions that we have been working on, Suren. Um, I think that we see the diversification strategy as very important to our business. It, pre it started long before COVID and we continue to work on it. Um, it has also really allowed us to be relatively unscathed during this COVID period um, because I suppose we've had a number of other elements on, you know, other irons on the, on the fire. So we intend to look at uh, future transactions that are continue to be in this built environment. I can't say what they are at this stage because I'm under confidentiality, but they are transactions that will continue on two key elements, gender transformation and, and diversification for us as a business. Um, infrastructure remains a very core focus of ours. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the concession space is one we really love, but we do think that accommodation concessions um, can be uh, infused. There needs to be a hybrid of a number of other sector focus areas within that space. And so that's also quite exciting and keeping our teams quite busy. So I'm excited, I think, Suren, um, by the last comment I'll make with, to you is the technology space. You know, um, we have to transition and, and have transitioned as a business to, to looking at our business far more through the lens of smart buildings and smart solutions. Not to say that clients will not need the standard facilities management that we have provided to date. But what we have, we have to acknowledge is, is that when you look at all of these businesses or types of sectors that we're in, in the built environment, the commonality between all of them really is about innovation and technology. Um, and so with one of our new heads who've just come on recently, we really are trying to make sure that we don't lose sight of that and that we stay close to trends and shifts and don't, and don't really lag behind as a business. Ipeleng, thank you for being on the Property Pod. That was Ipeleng Mkari, founder and CEO of Motseng Investment Holdings. Thanks for listening to the MoneyWeb Property Pod with Suren Naidu. To listen to more episodes, go to moneyweb.co.za or the MoneyWeb app and follow MoneyWeb News for daily updates. Follow Suren on Twitter at Suren Naidu for more of his property industry content and other business stories.